and uh, that was not me playing, that's Jack Gardner. I've been quite a fan of Jack's for quite a while. I mean, I remember seeing him on like the Guitar Idol, so and seeing him bits and pieces with Tom Quayle. And for some reason yesterday he picked one of my videos to win the JTC challenge and he sent me a message on Facebook just to say that I'd won, which was a surprise, so thanks for that. But I got asked to sort of talk about what I would play over Rock With You, Michael Jackson tune. You might have played it in function bands and stuff. <sighs> Excuse me. And I just sent Jack a message and said, would you have like a blast over this backing track? So I put the backing track up in two keys and you could think about it as being sort of starting on E minor for the one where you've done the key change or starting on E flat minor for before the key change. Why am I talking about that? Anyway, he played that so then it's obviously incredible. The rest of the video will be my playing and me explaining how I think about the changes and stuff. Uh, if you want to like and subscribe you could. You could also go and like Jack's stuff. Uh, I think you'll dig his channel probably already over there but if you haven't you could go and check it out. Um, thanks for that Jack. <laughs> Cheers. My name's John Cordy and I'm the Geek Doctor, obviously. Right, so Fridays is a day where I talk about chords and stuff. Uh, John Cordy. Uh, it's not intentional. And you might have noticed or recognised something in that intro. Hopefully it sounded a little bit like Rock With You. Michael Jackson song. Anyway, so I was 
chatting to a Patreon member and he asked whether I could do some chat about this and so it sort of reminded me of one of those tunes that you might be playing on a function or in a pub or you know the gigs that most of us normal people end up doing and you know the singer looks at you and says take a solo over this and you think okay I could probably do that and then two chords in you realize it's not exactly that easy to solo over so I just wanted to break down what the chords kind of are uh, when you're playing it in the original key and how I would think about some of it uh, maybe it'll be slightly interesting to one person so we start off with this E flat minor then an F minor and then this B flat major which doesn't seem to go with those then an E flat minor and then an A flat major and then a B major which again doesn't really seem to go with some of the rest of it and then again E flat minor F minor B flat major and then A flat sus and that's kind of the loop so you get this kind of Okay, sometimes the drummer, depending on who you're playing with, will probably be playing it a bit faster than that, but that's, I wanted to give you a backing track which has it like a comfortable tempo just to, to play around with, and I think it's a really cool progression. So, where would you place this, what kind of key? So later in the song, in the verse, there's this bit which kind of does this thing. <laughs> So, all of these chords are very closely related to D flat major or B flat minor. So I would think of it as like a E flat minor would be the two, F minor would be the three, B flat major would be the chord six but major because we're approaching chord two again. This is a, a non diatonic chord then back to E flat minor, uh, F minor again to three, and B flat major, that six major, however you want to call it, and then chord five here. So it's one of these things which is doing kind of weird things again. So what I would think about it as, so we've got a chord two to three, That's for me the, the the feel of it generally. And then you've got this, which is like an approach chord to the E flat minor. Okay, so for most of the tune we can use kind of a B flat minor pentatonic. And that's basically what the melody does. Except for there. So, this is a, a clue actually for, for most tunes. If you listen to what the actual singer is doing, if you do something close to what the singer does, generally you're going to end up playing something that sounds fairly okay. And this is a thing that I've done on functions before, and people like to hear you do this. So, if you're playing, the singer gives you that nod. If you just play literally the, the melody of the, the tune, but on a guitar, it has a sound which kind of works really well. I think the audience will appreciate it, the singer appreciates it. So this is something that I might do if I was in this situation. First steps might be just to learn the actual melody. So that, for me, takes up, uh, maybe your first chorus could do that, or your first couple of lines of the solo. Um, or 
or something around that. And I think that's a really good way to start a solo. And it kind of shows that you're listening to what's going on around you. It shows that you sort of know the tune. So that might be something that I might do. The other thing that you might do is kind of think about your own kind of simple-ish melodies that you might want to play over it. So maybe you think of a hook that works over it. So, so something like, I don't know. <laughs> And again, that's a really kind of cool way to start a solo and start to introduce the idea that you're taking this solo somewhere and that kind of thing. Um, once I've done those two approaches, I would start to get into the nitty gritty of where each of the chords comes from and do the kind of analysis stuff. And so then I might go a little deeper into the chord. So as I say, for that E flat minor, I'm thinking of that as a diatonic chord two, then diatonic chord three, then for that six, I'm approaching the E flat minor again. So I could use that, the idea of that being like chord five in a minor key. So things like, be the kind of thing that I would do um, or you target something like a B flat major arpeggio those would be a really good strategy so maybe you figure out where your B flat major arpeggios are that you could use and figure out ways to dismount from those and then you're back to the kind of normal stuff over this you've got a B major there which is not really valid in the key of D flat major or it's not at home here so this is a non-diatonic chord so for me what I find works well over that is if I treat that as chord 4 of F sharp major or I call it like a B Lydian so you could try that slowly so maybe you could try that with a, a looper or something so Or, again, you could kind of use that same idea of just using the B major arpeggio and use that as a way to negotiate that trickier chord. And, and then it's the same again. And then you go to this A flat sus, so just treat that as chord five of the D flat major. Or if you're feeling really fruity, you could start to do some kind of outside stuff there, but it is a function and you probably don't want to annoy the bride's mother too much. So those are my ideas. So as I say, chord two, chord three, a major version of chord six approaching chord two again, chord three, and then chord four of F sharp major, chord two, chord three, a major version of chord six, and then chord five. That's something like what I would play over it. Anyway, hopefully that's vaguely useful or interesting to one person. I'll write out the chart for it and how I would think over each chord. Um, and I've put together a few solos here that hopefully might give you an idea of what I'm thinking. These are kind of all pretty quick, just takes showing some of the concepts that I might do if I was actually playing this on a gig and maybe how I would build the solo. Um, but a lot of it would be thinking in B flat minor pentatonic um, and treating that as chord two, three, and then 
Then the B flat is acting as the dominant of E flat minor, so I'd be sort of thinking about. So I'd be thinking about an E flat minor kind of scale over the B flat major. So. So you could use E flat harmonic minor or you could use E flat melodic minor, both will work. But hopefully that will give you something to play over and the backing track will be on Patreon too. Thank you for stopping by, if you wanted to like and subscribe you could. Cheers.